Welcome to the football show sponsored by Indigo Communications. We are on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm delighted we're in the company of Hugh McDonald and Tam Cowan. Ruffy, unusually not here with us today, but oh, that's, what, that's what happens when you get into hiding, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> so they send a video message when he's chained to a radiator. Yeah. We yeah. thought we, uh, <laughs> yesterday was the most unbelievable show, Tam, because eventually when we did cane him for it all, he just said, no comment. Oh. It's right. the first time ever he was like. So, what's he done to upset the, the Thistle fans? Well, he misquoted Wordsworth or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, basically, <clears throat> he was just talking about the fact that the fans were were on the, the embankment at four o'clock. Nobody could see I him. I think he was maybe getting his facts a wee bit wrong, because, you know, that's what he was accused of. I saw the tweets, and, uh, you know, I just find it incredible that a big, lovable, jovial guy yeah. like Ruffy who just has a laugh a joke and a carry on through his entire life yeah. is going to see that end of football now uh, uh. I think they've taken the whole thing out of context though Tam I mean you're talking no, about I maybe he's <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Well, <laughs> exactly. By the way, see if we ever Kane Cosgrove. Let's see how strong the defence are. But uh, no, no, you're absolutely. I mean, he just he, listen. He made a joke about the fact that they, they put up a protest at four o'clock. It was dark. Start. Nobody Can could see, see them. I uh, mean, honestly, I mean, uh, get. I mean, get a life. I mean, for God's sake, Hugh. I mean, yeah, he, he did mention in the in the in the show. Everybody's got a legitimate right to protest, mm. make a complaint, and he said that the real thing that everybody needs to do is get behind the manager. Aye, but the, the, the other thing as well is the way that the Thistle, the, uh, the thistle have been run. If anybody thinks that there's anything, you know, not according to statute or to legislation or to SFA rules under the tenure of Jerry Britton, well, they don't know Jerry Britton. I mean, I've not been banging it ice, right, you yeah. know. Be the way. And the SFA have actually sanctioned what aye, they've been doing. Aye. Well, it's, it was a, I mean, not getting it too deeply, but it was a, a private company, the three, uh, three black cats, and it was their decision. I mean, it wasn't, you, you know, we could, uh, uh, we could cut it up any way you want, but this was a, this was a, this shareholding was held by the three black cats, private consortium. They decided where it should go. Absolutely. Um, so um, he will be back, uh, probably well, yeah, yeah. Mid, 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 mid February, um, and he will be known Excuse as me. Elsie then, because uh, 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 it's the only way he can walk about. Um, but nevertheless, um, <laughs> he yeah, his hands off himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so he's not here, but nevertheless, well, I don't think we're in, in any way, um, you know, diminishing the quality of the show because these two are, are in fine fettle and I'll give you an opinion as well. You might like the opinion, you might not, but at least you get one on the programme and also it's uncensored, unbiased and unmatched. We're on five days a week. How many other people, other than radio, um, I think are on five days a week? How many days are you on, Tab 2? I know, I'm just Saturday and Sunday. No, but you're yeah. quite right. you got an old veteran like our pal Huey Cavens, mm -hmm. who's only like, he does two a week, is yeah. it? Monday and a Friday. Yep. Ah, you, need, you need to leave the audience wanting more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. So, <laughs> so we're on five days in. <laughs> so, how about that weekend? You know, ironically, the weekend when you're known, when all the football was on, you know, but um, yeah. you need to re examine that, maybe. Yeah, we have re-examined that and um, there's lots of things coming up on PLZ Soccer. If you download the app, you'll realise all our breaking stories are on there and our reporters are out at the games and you can follow it across social media. So, uh, lots of good stuff on the horizon. Uh, we have a great competition too, in fact, on the programme. Uh, the first one is all about you and stocks and shares. You can enter this competition at any point uh, after each stage of the World Cup and it's absolutely free to play. Come and join PLZ Soccer on Fandex for our FIFA World Cup 2022 Stock Exchange game. It's absolutely free to play and you have the chance to win cash prizes. You can buy shares in your favourite team and watch their stock price increase or decrease based on their real life World Cup performances against the expected points tab set by Fandex. You can buy and sell as many teams as you like, as often as you like, with winners being announced after every round. The PLZ Soccer family are waiting for you on Fandex. Head to plzsoccer.com and click on Fandex World Cup 2022. Yeah, absolutely. We always like to throw you a wee question out. Um, how many goals has Pelly scored uh, in the official records on his career? How many do you think in 831 it was, games? It was over a thousand. Well, it's over a thousand according to the Brazilian FA, uh -huh. but the official FIFA records have a different figure. So I'll give, you, I'll give you another shout on that. Oh, 904. 904, what are you going for? I, I, th I, I 
989. Okay, we'll give you the answer at the end of the programme. I've, I've got a question for you as well. When, when, Which year, I bet you can nearly pinpoint this, in which year did almost every player in the Scottish League have the hairdo that Adam now sports? Yes. Remember um, that? Neil McCann, well, they all had uh, the curtains. Peter, Peter Hustra, that's who he aye, reminds me of. Aye. So what you're saying about 90... When was Peter Hoostra? 96. Mm, I think it might have been something like that. You're 96, 97. Mm. You're absolutely right. back. Mm. No. So are the Dan Dares, the old flares. Mm. Uh, now, my wee lassie's at the age now that she likes a wee uh, girl shop and a yeah. wee bat mm. shop and And she came down the mm. stair the other day and she, it was like, it wasn't even beyond boot cut. Yes. It was like big flary uh, denims, look cool. I know what and you're I've talking got some, about. I've got some boot cuts still up in the wardrobe but I can maybe bring back out now. Yeah. The only thing about it though that I'm worried about is will Sophie like the fact that you've got to button the jeans all the way up to there and then <laughs> this? <laughs> uh, Tam's day. Do you remember? Oh, well, I don't need to talk to you about flares, you. Oh, goodness gracious. I flares and platform souls. We're going to talk about the history of Scottish football and one day, you know, a hundred years from now when they re- to Hamden and they dig up the terraces and that they're going to find my one of my platform. Oh, you heels. lost one. Yeah, I lost one going hurtling down the terrace and when Joe Jordan scored the goal in uh, 73 and I had to walk back to Busby with Long John Silver. Yeah, because these remember the the platforms were that high, so I was. Rolling right. like a rolling gate. 1973, yeah. that really was. really lose it. Really <laughs> 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 sell it for a bet there. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> to be fair. my lover, I sold for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Um, I mean, at that time, at least with the flares then, you had... You had Mark Boland, you had David Bowie, oh, uh, you, you know, had all that crew in it. Oh, uh, wearing I have it, gear. it was still cool. I think Roxy Music as well. But anyway, um, we're taking a trip down memory lane. We're talking World Cup first and foremost because Argentina, uh, have they have they rediscovered their mojo? Uh, well, to ex extent, I thought they were, they, they were decent last night. I thought people going over the score about them last night. I thought they were decent. Any team with Messi in it is going to be pretty decent um, I'm not so sure they're, they're right at the top four teams in, 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 you know, in the World Cup at the moment I'm not top four? well semi-final wise all depends the way it works the, 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 the two best teams I've seen uh, over there I saw over there was definitely Brazil and Spain I think Portugal are good Portugal have found a goal scorer fourth I don't know. France, France probably, yeah. yeah. And France, what France have got of when and France have got strength through the team and they've got Mbappe as well. Uh, but they're so right in saying, though, that nobody has really, really stood out yet. Uh, well, it does seem quite open. I, I, I would agree. I thought Brazil, the game I saw in La Salle, Brazil uh, against Serbia, and the second 45 minutes were breathtaking. Yeah. That, but that, that, no, for 90 minutes, Tom, but for the yeah. second 45, they were. You looked at it, you saw oh, this is it. And I thought for 45 minutes against Germany, maybe a wee bit longer, aye, Spain were aye. breathtaking. But you're right, nobody's put in a, like a, a 90 minute, you know, yeah. top performance. It's almost as if actually a lot of the countries, the big countries, because you look at Germany, mm -hmm. um, it's almost as if they're looking and saying, well, we're going to treat this the way you have to cheat the group stages of the Champions League. You know what you <coughs> have to do. You get it done, and then you start to go up through the gears when you're coming up against top draw sides. I'm hoping that's the case because unless we get games to remember from 16 quarter semis onwards, yep. mm. all that will be remembered for Qatar for me, I don't know if you agree with this, Tam. The only thing that will be re you, you'll look back on is the fact that people have absolutely battered the the country of Qatar and FIFA for putting that tournament there. Yeah, but even that, um, lo and behold, uh, I think it was maybe for the first game, it was a big upset when Argentina lost <coughs> to, to Saudi. Saudi Arabia, right? I, I think you were hearing human rights, human rights, human rights, stadiums, workers that had died, and then you get a, a big game like that, a headline game like that with a short result, and I think everything kind of moved on a wee bit for there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, as I say, um, you know, you, you either cover it or you don't. Uh, obviously, the BBC got a lot of flack for not showing the opening ceremony. 
Uh, now, I thought that was a bit disingenuous of the folk making the complaints. If there's one thing, it tends to be guff and overly <laughs> long enough. It's always these opening <laughs> ceremonies at anything, right? <clears throat> yeah. You do not need to see it, right? But that was when, you know, Gary Winnaker and co absolutely beasted in uh, to Qatar. But again, that's where all the other elements of hypocrisy come up. You know, the very fact, all the guys, they could, they, and girls, they could, they could have done exactly the same job back in Salford at the BBC or down yeah. in London at the, or in Glasgow at the BBC. Magnificent big building there. Yeah. Go and use that. You don't need to go near Qatar yeah. if you hate it that much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy has been, uh, you know, really laughable. When, like, uh, when it comes to the let's all, uh, let's all uh, protest and, and wear armbands and things like that. As soon as FIFA says, "Yeah, wear an armband if you want," but you're going to get a booking, and we might take a point off uh, you. Yeah, but uh, uh, we'll just know. Yeah, we'll know the So you either you, the, uh, so you either believe in something. Uh -huh. And see if you believe in some, you know it yourself, yeah. we've, we've been in positions where we've believed in something in journalism and we've taken the flight for it heavily, taken the flight for it. You don't go, well, uh, 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 well I'm not going to do that. Nice. You just yeah. go uh, and do it. And that seemed to me that it was a bit of a, a knee-jerk. So many ways around that. I mean, the, any, the, the, the number two goalie nah. on the bench could, nah. have, could have covered his entire body in armbands nah. and, and gone out and done a wee warm-up and the mm. cameras would have caught him. Uh, the press would have got the photos global, but you know, that, that was the that. German thing as well was hilarious. I, I mean, know, they're I, going out and going like that. Well, we don't, you know, we've been banned from talking. Yeah. Whereas, I understand Mesut Ozil uh, left the German squad four years ago because he says they were being racist to him. Yeah. <laughs> the exact same players. I know, but the other unfortunate thing about it, and, it, and listen, I don't want to get really far oh, let's go far the political uh, aspects of this, but. You know, for all the, and, and sometimes it is, there are many people in, through history that have made gestures, s took a, a strong stand on things. And the big question is, has it changed mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. or the politician's mindset mm -hmm. or the treatment of mm -hmm. people? You know, you can look back at the Olympics in 1968, you know. Aye, the, the you can, Tommy Smith. Ah, you yep. put that, that, now, has hit, did his stance change mm. the treatment of blacks in America in 2022? You'd have to take a long, hard look at yourself and think to yourself, yeah, what changes? Will Qatar change mm -hmm. because someone from a Western country does not like the way they treat their migrant mm. workers or their gays or indeed women? Yeah. Well, the other thing as well is like all protest, and I thought Roy Keane was brilliant in this, all protest has to have an element of risk to it. So when Tommy Smith put his hand up like that in the, in the podium in 1968, he knew his career was over. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick, when the, 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 the... Take the knee. Take the knee. When he was taking the knee, he knew he was running out of contract. And Colin Kaepernick has still not been signed by an NFL team. And now, obviously, as the years pass, will not be. There's got to be... If you believe in protest, you've got to go all the way with it. See, and, and see... And then you've got to mention names. You know, see this Gareth Southgate thing, that, oh, well, the England team will do this, the England team will do this, and Harry Kane will do this. Did nothing. Uh, they did uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. And to be fair, uh, you know, sometimes I think we, uh, you know, can be, uh, you know, pontificating about things while not taking a look at our own backyard. And I do think, you know, for, for a country like ours to be starting to take the moral high ground <coughs> when we have food oh, banks, exactly. when we have well, food, food banks, banks across the country. And look where the, the next World Cup's going, the next World Cup's going to America. We have, we have a constitutional right to bear arms, which has already killed two sections or Two rest, uh, nightclubs with gays in it, shot completely. It's got now got the Supreme Court going against women's rights. Yeah. It sanctions drone executions abroad and all that. Uh, people of colour are much more likely to be uh, jailed. People of colour are much more likely to be killed by police. And let's not go start on Mexico. Yeah, I mean, I, come on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Peace, what were you there, Huey? Uh, seven days. Yeah. Any impact on you or anything like that? No. No, the, the thing I found about it all, I mean... You could have a drink. Yeah. You could you have a drink. See well, that? he's been a bit two-faced, because I know for a fact he's got a conservatory done the noon already. 14 men have died. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean... You Aye. Could. The drinking thing, a lot of it... The, the thing about it was, I've never been anywhere, you know, the, and I was talking to, a, there was there was gay people there, obviously, you know, they, were, they, they yeah. come out and talk to you and that. And but I think, I, it's a legit, I think it's a legitimate point, you know, 
the, they can't put a figure on the migrant workers that have died, mm. which is a tragedy. And mm. I, I think Henry Winter mentioned something which I thought was very pertinent. Never mind trying to put a figure on it. One's too many. Mm. Um, and, and by the way, one's too many that should be compensated. Mm. So that's the first thing. The second part of it is, you know, um, after the migrant workers, mm. the gay issue, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to try and change you know, that country's uh, it's ethos and beliefs and everything, they're not going to do it. And no. for women, you know, I think that's, I I, 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 I mean, none of them are, mm. one is not more important mm. than the other, but for women to be treated as second-class citizens, I mean... That's a, the, when I was over three years ago, I was talking to a, uh, a lecture at Northwest University over there in America, and he felt that the migrant worker thing, his views was, the, the World Cup had changed that because it had moved it forward, it changed the system, and that will not go back. He also felt the tolerance towards uh, gay LBGTQ plus rights had changed a bit. Yeah. He says, but the one he he said that women's rights were still not quite on Saudi Arabia levels when yeah. a lot of dry cars and that, but that they were. Uh, it was slow, they were slowly coming from. The thing about it over there, Peter, was nobody was really rightly or wrongly, hypocritically or whatever. Nobody was talking about that. It was just yeah. it was just like a football festival. It was yeah. hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world. It's the safest place I've ever I mean, you know, people were saying, you know, like I was talking to two gay guys uh, from, from Manchester who were saying to me they'd never felt safe. I mean, it's a, it's a very almost sanitised, safe society. Can imagine you at a disco? Oh, aye, aye. Yeah, it's it's a final. Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it was a very safe environment. Aye. I never felt in any way threatened or anything like that. The infrastructure, of course, uh, is just... Mind boggling. I mean, Ali, my son, and Andy, I mean, we've travelled the world, you know, in stages of my career. I've, I've been to, I would say, all the big stadiums, certainly in, in, in Europe yeah. and pr probably America. And it's just on a different scale, yeah. literally on a different scale. Uh, I have to say, um, and by the way, uh, just f because of the 21st century um, or 2022, um, Hugh hasn't got an extension and nobody's died. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know what it's like? The world's gone mm. mad. Um, but it is a, po a point that I think is, is worthy of it. I know some people, you know, get slightly miffed on this uh, programme um, when it gets a little bit political, um, but... It, it, it is inextricably linked to Aye. football. I mean, I did hear Gary Lineker say you can't separate the two of them because no, it's no, becoming it's more and more intertwined oh, in, in events, uh, you know, and of course, uh, the people who mm. um, are making money out of it, you know, the models of it, you know, the peop the sponsors, you only have it's to look at these things. It's, it's, it's FIFA all around. making 7.5 billion out of this. Yeah. Right, right. Well, there you are. Um, listen, uh, the one joy of it all, and I have to say, Tam, I mean, Although we're, we're going to talk about VR, but Messi's I didn't think was a penalty shoe. No, I thought it was soft as well. It was very soft, yeah. wasn't it? I mean, how he even got to a point of looking and going, I think I'm going to give him a penalty yeah. for that. Um, but the one thing that is a joy um, last night, Tam, is for kids. Um, you know, a lot of them maybe have not witnessed Messi, if they're growing up now and this is their first World Cup, they may not have witnessed Messi at his absolute best in... Uh, the the Champions League mm -hmm. but he's a joy last night he sees passes oh, that nobody aye. else can see he's just an absolute joy of a player I really do I mean I think Brazil will win it right. but I really want Argentina to oh, win it they, they've got a lot of supporters because of that but it's interesting you say about how you know Messi and the fact that you're able to watch him in the Champions League and then you see him at the World Cup we, we were discussing this last week in the radio the fact that the players now don't seem to have that mystique that they once had. Yeah. Once upon a time, you'd, you'd watch the World Cup, um, be it 7, 8, 82, and you'd see these guys like Zico mm. or Socrates and that. And that was the only that, that chance you had of watching them. You're yeah. right, you know, and it was a, it was probably <coughs> four years uh, mm. getting back to generate, you know, Rivalino and all these yeah. guys, you know, and you think, wow. And they were like quite mythical mm. creatures, you know, whereas every man in their dog you, uh, can, you can watch Messi you know twice a week now and sit in front of the table uh, yeah I mean the great point about uh, Messi uh, I think when you look back at his career and Ronaldo is they've done it in what is generally considered the the best um, you know European competition which is the Champions mm. League 
in the olden days, we were again so insular mm. in our thinking mm. that we thought, well, if if nobody comes to play in the in mm. you know Britain, they can't have been the great players. No. I, you know, uh, Pele and that mm. whole Brazilian side didn't need to come to Europe. Mm. They could win the World Cup three no. times because they had the best players. They, they technically were far better than anyone else. They just came to uh, Europe to 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 do these tours, you know, where they got weighed in with tens of thousands of dollars as it would have been in days when days when tens of thousands of dollars was looked as a lot of money. It's funny Tam saying that because, you know, like when when I was young and and that was a long time ago, you know, like somebody like Pelly, the only time we, we went to Ham, I was eleven and I went to Ham to watch Pelly against uh, Scotland and, and that was just to see Pelly. And I remember even later, uh, it would be uh, when Maradona came to, and this sounds ridiculous now, when Maradona came to Hamden, yeah. all the boys in the Scots were here, the pub that I was drinking at the time, we organised a bus because there's no, people, this is, people forget that, there's no YouTube in these days, there was aye, no, aye. you couldn't watch Maradona <coughs> playing for Boca. Yeah. I mean, you may get two minutes in World of Sport, a Boca's won the Argentinian aye. Championship, there's a score. So you barely knew what he looked like, yes. never mind Daniels. So to go along in that beautiful sunny day and see Maradona come out onto the park and say, right, let's see what this, let's see what yeah. you've got, son. The only image, God, I, yeah, it was great. Uh, the only image I can remember, and I remember watching it so vividly, prior to anybody talking about Diego Maradona, was Arthur Montford mm. on Scott Sports saying, by the way, you know, everybody is raving about a kid over in Argentina. Mm. And they showed you a young boy, Maradona, on a dirt pitch, the, aye, was, um, keeping the ball up. Uh, and, you're th and you're thinking, you know, it sticks in your head because you, you, you start to see him develop. And then all of a sudden he's 16, 17, playing at Hamden um, Park. Um, magnificent. It's a he, joy. He, so he did that as well. Here, you take me back there. Motherwell played, um, it was a pre-season game. Um, may even have been a testimonial. Mm. Details are sketchy, but it was about 1980, 81. And Motherwell were playing San Jose Earthquakes, oh, right? right. And George Best was going to play a half each for Murrow and San. He might even have been with him at the time or something, yeah, right? Yeah, But that was unmissable. Oh, you know, it wasn't because you didn't see, you did, I'd, growing up as a kid, I'd have been about 11 at the oh. time, and you'd always heard about this great George Best. And then here was my chance to actually see him in the flesh. You were, there was no way you weren't going to go to that. And he even went down and see the, the <coughs> Texaco Cup. <laughs> uh, one of my great, I used to go and watch Motherwell and the Texaco Company played Spurs. Oh, aye. And it was like uh, Martin Chivers aye, and aye. You know, Steve Perryman. Well, you'd seen them on the telly because there was, ma there was ma yeah. it was match of the day, the big right. match. But the idea of actually going along to a game right. and yeah. seeing them in the flesh, and by the way, uh, Motherwell, you know, Motherwell tonked them, aye. you know. Yeah, uh, more than hell. You know what? I do think that, that all adds to the fact that, that because for me then, maybe, and it sounds very, very harsh because of the guy we're talking about, but uh, in terms of a mythical creature, I think, I think Pele is right, right up there. One, one, one time in the future, we will have the technology. I know you used to say you can't compare an apple to an orange, but we will have the technology eventually for them to compare Pele mm. with Cruyff, with Maradona, with Messi, with yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, and I think if we, if we did have the computer that could uh, pull off such a job, I think Pele would be down there. That's just my opinion. Oh, going I down think, the way. I think, yeah. it, I think you get better and better in people's minds the more that they maybe didn't they see him. Yes. You know, it was just this name, Pele, oh Brazil, it's all flamboyant, it's all tippy-tappy on the beach and it's all, and he shot for the halfway line, but it, it, it was miles, he must be miles. Mm. Chick Charnley has scored three of them. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a great argument, isn't it? But uh, I mean, I, I, my, top <coughs> five, my top five now is still Pele number one, uh, closely followed by Maradona, right. then Messi, then, you know, and then I'm looking and I'm really trying to separate Ronaldo and Cruyff, mm. if only for the fact that Cruyff's contribution, uh, you know, mm. for you know, for every every club that he played mm. for, you know, he won something with them. Right. He only played one World Cup too, Cruyff. I know, and it's incredible, incredible isn't it? Just think about right, and that track record, if he had a signed for them, Barton. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it would have changed everything. Um, anyway, um, was that ever close, Huey? I was closer than people think. Seriously, aye. I, I, I was aye. Closer was it a local businessman or something? I was, was usual going to pay for it, it, and, uh, it was closer than people think. I was never really close. Uh, I've just finished reading a second Cruyff biography. Yes. <laughs> That's how daft I am. I gave Peter the, the first one. 
and uh, it's, it's mentioned in there. Interesting in that uh, is Cruyff is um, if you had to talk about, I don't think he's the best player ever, but if you had to talk about the most significant football think- person ever. I think Cruyff's in that argument very high because not only was he a great player, but he was a great manager and he was a tremendous mentor. And I think Cruyff's significance, you know, in the likes of Guardiola and... and, and, and I think his strategy to Barcelona, his contribution to him is immense. Immense. And Ajax. And I, and um, Fiener, by yeah, the way. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, listen, it's great. It's subjective. Some people mm. are generational and say, oh, wait a minute, you mm. guys are of a certain generation, you don't know what you're talking about, the game's moved on. Absolutely, it's moved on. That's what I love about it. Everybody's got an argument on it. Um, Argentina, incidentally, um, they go through. Poland go through. I'm gutted they are through because mm. they did nothing. Poland's the most uh, uh, divided team to go through. I mean, I was just I was on uh, social media last night and everybody was, uh, just, <coughs> was just giving them a kicking for getting through. <laughs> uh, uh, they, everybody presumes that the next game they'll go out but it might, the next, once they're in the knockouts, what suits Paul? Does Paul want to break? They want to soak up pressure and break. So there may be a freak, maybe a freak result in Poland, yeah. 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 Can you I, break I, from your own half and just stay in it? Uh, mm. You know, well, got Le- the good thing is, see if they break, they've got, they've got Lewandowski, who's yep. yeah. maybe the second best number nine is in the he, world. Is he the most, dis- is Poland the most disappointing country or is it, is it Germany? Is it, well, it can't be Wales, I've put Wales there, but it can't mm. be, is it Belgium? I mean, Belgium I, are in disarray. I think it's Belgium. I, I think Poland don't come into disappointing. They come into disappointing for maybe those of us who watch from a neutral standpoint but in Warsaw and, and Gdansk and, and Krakow they'll be the most overachieving team in the world I mean they don't know we're looking at it as disappointed they're yeah. in the knockout stages of the World Cup yeah. um, so uh, but Belgium and the, the only thing it takes away from the real disappointment of Belgium was there was that kind of bottle of milk thing about Belgium before the World Cup. We are taking a sniffing going, is, is that off or is it, yeah. is it right. right? Well, you've got Courtois coming out and saying there's a mole. Mm. He's not happy. Mm. You've got the suggestions of a punch <coughs> up in the dressing room. You've got, and I thought this was the most outrageous thing. I don't care how mm. gobby you are about telling the truth. You don't come out and say the team's too old mm. to win the World Cup. I thought Kevin De Bruyne was bang out of order there. Well, De Bruyne's been strange, actually, because we watched, we were uh, Belgium-Canada. And Canada were the, the better team. Uh, but in the World Cup, and there's in any other cup at all, you're really judged by what you've got up front. And Canada had nothing up front, Tam. They just had nobody to score a goal. Made tons of chances. And and, and, and Belgium had Batshuayi up front, who got one chance and scored. Uh, and that's it. But De Bruyne won man of the match. And when we were watching, I love Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. And I was sitting with the boys and I was saying, I thought it was something I would never see in my life. De Bruyne is awful. He was yeah. dreadful in the match. He was just like awful. It looks as if he didn't care. He was lackadaisical. He hit one pass miles away. <laughs> and I said to them, I said to the boys, we want him by dinner. I said, I've never seen him play that badly in my life. Aye. And he won man of the match. Aye. And Aye. he came out afterwards and he said, I was never man of the match. I was rubbish. I was awful. Yeah. Uh, but So he was really downplaying everything. And that gave me the sense of, you didn't have to say, I just take the man of the match and walk away. And it sensed to me that, they're not happy oh, there. Oh, it's not well. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a taxi, I'll chuck this one out, a taxi driver the other night said to me, um, I'll not share all these views. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'd not just say he could, FIFA would give him a nod to the World Cup in the back of his motor. But, but the, um, he was saying that he reckons that it's a classic sods law kind of thing. He reckons that Scotland could have made inroads if we had have qualified. Looking at the general standard, he thought for the first time ever we could have got through to the knockout stages, do you reckon there's even a snuff for that? I, I mean, if you want to be practical about it, you look at, we would have ultimately been in there instead of Wales. Uh, yeah. So it would have been us in that group, mm. would you reckon? I, I, think I find it difficult to entertain it. Um, I think we've still got a bit to go. I think uh. we've still got to try and unearth, you know, <clears throat> I think we've still got to, un- <clears throat> we've got the same problem as England, and incidentally, <clears throat> we've <clears throat> centre-halves. No. Aye. Aye. Need, need, need a, a defence, Hugh. Yeah, I think the thing about Wales was a rank rotten. I mean, Wales were out with a washing. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we would have been better in Wales. Yeah. Uh, do you think England will win the World Cup? No. 
No, um, I, I don't think so either. And it's not a campaign against England. I'm not in that group of people who are anti-English. Well, it's not really anti-English. It's yeah. uh, just looking, it's an looking at the runners and riders. Yeah. I wouldn't be biased as well if I was picking a horse in the mm. derby. I was look, I'd be looking at the forum and I, I, I don't think England are the team for me. Yeah, I think they've got some really good players. I mean, I like Foden. Um, I really like Foden. I, I, I like Rashford as a person, mm. um, what he's done. Um, and I also think it's great that he's getting this little bit of redemption on the park um, after a shaky time at Man United um, but you know other than Kane they haven't got people that you think oh they're going to go on and win it and I think they're back to I me or lose them the games I agree but I think they've got three big problems I don't think their manager's good enough to change things in play yep. I don't think their goalie's good enough to be the you know the decisive factor and I don't think it's centre half. They're good enough to keep really top quality opposition out. Uh, I think further on they're fine. I think in midfield, I think Bellingham uh, is, is Bellingham's going to be one of these guys who gets hundred odd caps. Yeah. Terrific player. I watch him with Dortmund a lot. He's just, I mean, for a kid at 18, 19, whatever he is, he's outstanding. I think Foden is that. Why Gareth Southgate was he playing Foden? I, I don't know. And Kane, I mean, that would have been slaughtering Kane. But Kane's like, an oh, awful good player. Even if he doesn't score. Nah, he's an um, awful good player. I'll tell you the one thing, and you'll appreciate this, uh, both of you will appreciate this, just have a wee look at some of the mm. players that actually it would have been great to see them at a World Cup. PLZ Soccer has a look back at the top five players missing out on a place in this year's FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Number five, Marco Verratti. Euro 2020 winners Italy failed to qualify for this year's tournament after a 92nd minute winner from North Macedonia saw the Azzurri fail to qualify for their second straight World Cup. The Italians, who have been crowned winners four times, just one less than Brazil, have starred in 18 out of the 22 World Cups, reaching the final six times. In fourth, Mo Salah. The striker, who is currently Liverpool's top goalscorer with 14 goals, missed out on a place in Qatar with Egypt also failing to qualify for this year's tournament. Egypt have qualified for the FIFA World Cup on three other occasions, in 1934, 1990 and 2018. In third, Sadio Mane. One of Senegal's most decorated outfield players will be missing this year's World Cup after picking up an injury on his right fibula. Mane recently made the move to Bayern Munich from Liverpool after scoring over 100 goals for the Reds, including the winning goal that put Liverpool through to the Champions League final in May. At 30 years old, there is a chance that the number of major tournaments left in the striker's locker are limited. In second place, Erling Haaland. The insanely talented 22-year-old has not been slow in making an impact in the English Premier League, scoring 18 goals for Man City this season. The Norwegian would have been perfect fit for the world stage. However, Norway finished third in their qualification group behind Turkey and the Netherlands, where they exited the competition at the quarter-finals. It is yet to be seen if they'll qualify for Euro 2024. And finally, the latest to be ruled out of a starring role in Qatar is French striker Karim Benzema. Just days before the opening ceremony, it was announced that this year's Ballon d'Or winner would not be joining his countrymen, having picked up a thigh injury. He is considered one of the best strikers of his era, with his Real Madrid manager Ancelotti describing him as the best striker in the world in 2021. Yeah, pity we didn't see Benzema, but Haaland I thought would have ripped it up because he's the he's what I would call the just the ultimate number nine at the moment, isn't he? Mm, I was I thought you'd miss Kevin Van Veen there, frankly, but there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think out of those, uh, the, the interesting thing for me, Haaland, when you watch him, mm. but bear in mind that kind of Man City uh, team that he's in, he's able to do his box of tricks and all that, and he's got all these great players around him. Um, I, I, I couldn't claim an expert in the Norwegian national team, but um, you know, um, you know, I, 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 it might be a wee bit of the messy thing with Argentina mm. again. You know, might have been the, the world heaped in that boy's shoulders. You know, yeah. and maybe there's a wee bit of him. I know it sounds ridiculous, but a wee bit of him secretly uh, quite pleased that he missed it. You mm. know. Because the, 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 you know, everybody would be looking at him expecting wonders, you know. Yeah, well, that's the good of... shout. Five, well done, Kerry. Yeah, yeah. Five so the interesting thing with the Kerry's choices as well, apart from Verratti, who's a midfielder, it was all it was all strikers. Yeah, the real people that we miss because we we've, we've had great. Uh, heroes in the past that were defenders, mostly Italians, the Baresis and the Costa Curtas and the Maldinis and etc. Cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Even Beckenbauer's in midfield. But the real guys are the strikers. That's what you want uh, to see at yeah. World Cup. They make uh, games, don't they? They, they? they change games as well. And and 
And after your spell in Qatar, though, do you think it's, it should have been Kerry that picked those five players? Aye, she's she's right, very much. Should have been Adam or something. No, 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 I won't. No, no, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> never Adam. I never thought we could go down that road, but nevertheless, <laughs> um, uh, one little couple, couple of points before I go into Ian Maxwell um, is Ronaldo, uh, 150 million pounds. Pounds a season um, <laughs> for Al Nassar FC if he wants to take it. He's still, I still, he's hankering over a Champions League team somewhere. Aye. What he wants to do now, these guys, particularly Ronaldo, Ronaldo was always about making records. You know, he was like, you know, I want to score so many goals. And he wants to make records that are unattainable. You know, just go so far ahead, particularly in Champions League goals. But that's what he's scrambling about for. And when you think about it, the Champions League thing is, is very, very difficult because what Champions League team will take him? And the answer is, well, Paris Saint-Germain won't. Bayern Munich has come out and said, no way. There's no way Dortmund's going to take him. Yeah. And then there's no way England's going to take him. Maybe Chelsea, there was a sniff about that, but I don't think they will. So it leaves you with sporting club of, of Portugal. Been, yeah. uh, I mean, that's about... Uh, it leaves you with that, so... But it's not about the money for him because he's got so much no, money that no, you know it's about records. Yeah, absolutely. What See how he is after his operation. And that's that if he's still because you know he's going in next week uh, to have uh, Piers Morgan's nose removed for his arse. Yeah, absolutely. That's happening next Tuesday. So yeah, and a big <laughs> and a big. Load Wouldn't it be great if he just thought, you know what? Uh, you, you, he found out he went on one of the his country's version of who do you think you are, uh, and it turned out he'd a wee bit of Scottish heritage, <laughs> and he thought, you know what? I'm going to bow out. Uh, Turns out his great great granny was actually for Orchard Street in Motherwell, yeah. and he says there's only one team for me. <laughs> it would be great, and he does it for nothing. Absolutely, we can all uh, dream. And uh, well, absolutely. And then he spotted up the Rex Cafe having, <laughs> having <laughs> a sort of supper. Just goes to hell. Did the Dutchy Park there, Kerry? The two the, the two Ronaldos end up the same <laughs> size. <laughs> um, anyway, um, SFA. Uh, I thought yesterday was interesting um, because obviously. Ian Maxwell was speaking, Craig Gordon was speaking as well, but they were here at the uh, anniversary 150 years ago, the first mm. official uh, recognised international between Scotland and England. Yeah, I was um, there. And it, it was, uh, yeah, absolutely. Was man of the match. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those situations where I don't think we ever thought it would go on to the levels it has gone. We haven't played England as much nowadays with the, the loss of the home championships. So when you get them, it's very, it's rare, it's because enjoyable. we couldn't have beat Ukraine and well, then Wales. Absolutely, it would be uh, great. But the it would, chance of playing them again. I liked playing against <coughs> England and Wales and Northern oh, Ireland, all that whole thing. It, it, you know, whether it comes back in any format in the future, you know, God only knows. But, you know, the, the, the actual... The actual history of it was great out there for you. No, I, I mean, the thing about what you forget about um, Scotland and England, and particularly people of a younger generation, was that we played them every every year. And uh, it was a cultural, it was a thing. Because you, the year you played them at Hamden, you started saving. I mean, oh. pubs had the... I mean, there's always the great stories. Or Jimmy Bloggs has run off with the Wembley money. Yeah. Every pub had that. Had, <laughs> every pub, and then the scramble for Wembley tickets oh, started. Wow. I mean, the, the <clears throat> so you had all that. I mean, it was a real thing going yeah. to Wembley. You know, we're going. What day is it? And well, Ruffy would doing? say the funniest thing was when he walked out at Wembley. He thought. Has anybody sold any tickets to the English Oh, fans? aye. Oh, incredible, eh? No, because they managed to snaffle oh, them all. Uh, <coughs> of all the games, I wonder if you guys... Uh, we've picked five mm. memorable ones, maybe right. some for England fans. England 9, Scotland 3 in 61. Of course, 3-2 to Scotland in mm. 67, when England were world champions. Um, 77, 77 is 2-1. At 96, because England obviously qualified for... Um, I think that was a, a knockout one where England won 2 1 at 2 0 um, against Scotland, and then the 2 2 draw in 2017 well, 90, with Griffiths. Hmm. 96 was that, or the England, that was the European Championship? Championship. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Uh, Gascoigne. 99 second. was the playoffs. 99, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, 96, Gascoigne. Um, amazingly, I, I think I had two. T I think I had two tickets from the Azerbaijan FA, Hugh, okay. wow. uh, and I ended up right next to the England fans mm. in that in 1996. Because I used to. Follow, I don't know you. Did you used to follow Scotland? I, no, I was I there as well. We get. We'd, we'd only been doing the radio for a couple of years, mm. and we were uh, very kindly allowed to go down. 
uh, to those championships and, and do some radio shows mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, I was sitting there, um, the, the bulk of the Scotland fans, uh, they, they were all kind of behind the goals. We were up in the stand here looking out and it was absolutely brilliant. And even though it was a sore one on the day, mm -hmm. but the fact that for two, two of the biggest moments, certainly in that fixture, but two big, big football moments, I, I can say that at least I was there when the Gary McAllister penalty, yeah. we, yeah. Yuri Geller supposedly mm -hmm. in a helicopter above the stadium. And then of course that incredible uh, Gaza goal and the ensuing mm. celebration, you know. So, yeah. ah, it was a sore one at the time, but a great, a great, great occasion to look back on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ian Maxwell was there. He was talking about uh, obviously handballs, VAR. Um, he insists it is working. The clubs are welcoming VAR, um, but he, he, I think the one thing that he wanted to highlight was that there are still concerns over the speed of it all mm. and the communication. <coughs> Um, I, I mentioned it yesterday. And I don't know if you agree with me, Hugh. You know, although a lot of the, a lot of the the, the managers and the players are welcoming it because you're going to get a percentage of mm. the correct decisions. Um, I wonder if it's maybe good time now because of VR for the referee to come out at the end of a game and say, "Well, listen, because we're in this era now of getting it right and trying to get the majority of them right, here's why I made that decision." I spoke to the VR, they said this, and then I still made the ultimate decision, and this is why I came to it. Yeah, I would love that, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. No. Because it opens up more inquiry. And yeah, was, yeah. Uh, and, and then, it, it's like everything else, it's like the old saying, if you give a journalist one question, he wants two. If you give him two, <laughs> he or she wants three. He wants yeah. four. You know, if you say, I, I, I gave that penalty because I thought that guy, you know, the guy had uh, put his studs up and that. Uh, but did what you not see this? them? Yeah. But I would love them just to come out with a statement. But I always remember Craig Thompson. There was a bot. There was a the former Scottish referee. There was a there was a website <coughs> kind of thing that they had the Whistler's website. When That's they, right. They, right. I get in quickly. Uh, and I get in quickly because Craig Thompson came out and there was an absolute stonewall penalty in a, um, a Celtic Rangers game which he didn't give, and he came out and he went, you know what? I should have gave that. You know, it's was, it was just it was just a poor decision. Yeah. So instead of people saying, um, right, well, yeah, let's move on, and and and, and they just got yeah. Just got well, the last thing, the last thing you need is honesty in it. Uh, uh, you know, it's black box thinking. Let's protect ourselves here and uh, uh, and and not leave ourselves open to any kind of you know. And, but, and in this day and age, litigation, you name it, uh, going into court for exactly, denying right. somebody and, a place and, and in the yeah, final. Again, it's uh, the referees that still get the scalp and maybe have the post match interview with the guy that get booked after taking a dive in the box. Mm -hmm. Get him in front of the camera and say, "Why did you? Why did you try to cheat uh, your opponents? Why did you try to cheat the yeah. referee? Some was going to get a flack for you know. Just yeah, talk to these guys." Ian Maxwell mentioned Tam that he, he reckons that you know we've got to be careful because of the effect on the referees. This constant microscopic analysis of every decision. Now the reason I'm mentioning that to you is because we've we've got this period where, as Ian Maxwell and so many others have said, this is kind of a bedding in, and there's been consternation about certain decisions, handballs especially, yep. is annoying uh, everybody. Uh, but this, for me, is only the precursor to the mayhem of January 2nd. <laughs> because as you know yourself, a mother will, a mother will um, you know, misdemeanour that denies you uh, the points, you try Swept under the carpet. Absolutely. So so suddenly it's, it doesn't take on as much significance. But by January 2nd, mm. once one of these teams is denied something, right. all hell will let loose. Yeah, right. Now, the thing I would say, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, say what you want about Qatar and the World Cup and all that. Maybe the good thing about us having this tournament on at this time of year, it's given even uh, domestic fans, punters here in Scotland, another chance to forensically look mm. at VAR. And I think, by and large, we were discussing it before the show today, um, VAR, I think, has worked a treat um, at the World Cup. There hasn't been any outrageous, apart from the, the Welsh goalie mm -hmm. who got the yellow card. But even that was dealt with very quickly. It was yeah. a speedy that that impressed me. And the ref realised, oh, no, now that I've seen it again, well, red card, right? And that's that's great. That's why we've got such a system. But I, I, it's the, the, the handball thing. Uh, that worries me, and I'm, uh, you know, I would be amazed. In fact, I even suggested it uh, on the radio a couple of weeks ago. The, the referees used to always have their wee summer joint up to St Andrews. Mm -hmm. They all went up there together, and they, you know, and they we bought a camaraderie and a wee bit of team bonding. But they would, you know, a lot of discussions and a lot of mm -hmm. 
uh, speakers and all the rest, it'd go through the rule book, wonder about any wee tweaks, etc. I, 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 I thought maybe when the World Cup's got underway and we don't have any of our officials out in Qatar, they could maybe go together again and, and try to streamline, mm -hmm. shall we say, the, 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 the rules and regulations on handball. Because yeah. I don't think anybody really knows where we are right now. Well, to be honest with you, Tom, they did that. They have mm. done it in the last couple of days. They mm. got uh, a number of us all together again and offered an invite to come and look for an update from Crawford Allen mm. on things like handball, red card decisions. Um, so they've offered an update, whether it's a need for them all to get in collectively, and I presume they would have all get in collectively and said, look, here's how this should have been played out to try and get us to a point where it's getting better and better when we come back in December, uh, Hugh. I don't know, only time will See, tell. It's an experiment. Mm -hmm. It's an experiment. Here's how you would wipe it out uh, in a flash. If the ball hits your arm, it's perfectly legitimate. Well, there's no handball, right? Mm -hmm. If the ball hits your arm, it's the same as if it hits your mm -hmm. chest or it hits your knees or anything like that, and just see what happens. Well, what you have is people diving to push the ball. You, know, you, you, have, you have Luis Suarez denying a country a place in the, a place in the next stage of the World Cup, which is coming up for revenge shortly. Um, out in a friendly or something, yeah. you know, just to see what would happen. Because yeah. it's, as it's getting absolutely bonkers now, it's been mad for the all the famous ones this season. The, the Michael Smith one at yeah. Tynecastle, right? It was ridiculous. Then you had the the young Argentinian fullback at Celtic. Nah, he's back to the ball. He's in mid air, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, the, and the ball hits off his arm in a penalty. Tell you what, let's try bonkers. it. Let's try it over at the pitches at North Mother. We'll, we'll go down mm -hmm. there and do it because then have a go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was going to say to you guys. Um, uh, well, before I say it to you. There's a competition we've got. We teamed mm. up with uh, Greaves Sports and Copa, and I think oh. this is well worth it because uh, Kerry's about to tell you how, if you know what the World Cup's all about, you can still enter at any point, um, a chance to win yourself uh, some fabulous vouchers. PLZ Soccer has teamed up with our friends at Grieve Sports and Copa to offer you the fabulous chance to win one of these World Cup retro shirts if you enter our World Cup hat-trick competition. All you have to do is tell us who you think will win the World Cup, finish top goal scorer and who will be declared player of the tournament. The person who gets all three correct will go into a draw to win one of six vouchers to choose their very own retro World Cup shirt from the Grieve Sports website. And if you don't get all three correct, then don't worry. You can still subscribe to our YouTube channel for a chance to win. To enter, simply submit your answers in the feed below and if you want to double your chances of winning, then make sure you subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. The winner will be announced on the day of the World Cup final. Good luck. Yeah, great stuff from uh, Kerry there, a good chance. I mean, I have picked mine, I've gone Brazil, Mbappe and uh, Giroud as the top scorer. Mm. Um, well, I, I was amazed when, when Ruffy burst out laughing the other day about Giroud being the top goal scorer. He's, he's a decent shot. I mean, he's only number nine I've got, right? So yeah. he's going to play every game. He's already got, what, two? Yeah. What, what wins it? Five? Six? Absolutely. I mean, it usually is about six ah, that does it. Who's England's it. Unless, top scorer course, just now? Unless you're Just Fontaine, it's ah, 15. It's 15 ah, yeah. Who's England's top scorer just now? Yeah, England's top scorer. Goodness That's gracious. Good one. Well, Rashford's got two. Well, that'd be it then. Yeah. Because Kane's not scored. And, uh, what about in the Iran game? Did somebody else not get two? No, I don't know. I think they did. Mm, yeah, they, they could be poised as well. Might be an England player. Yeah, well, listen, you can't rule it out. But um, who 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 did you pick to win it? Um, well, I picked Argentina. That right. was the kind of the heart rule on the head. Mm. I've, I've bet, incidentally, maybe Hume can give me the lowdown. I just, I don't know. I was like, whether I was betting a greyhound or a horse, I'm, I was never, ever, ever a favourite back in the league. I bought a value wee each way. Uh, so I put a few quid the other day on Senegal. Right. Uh, I just liked I liked the cut of their jib. Okay. Mm, yeah. Um couple of wee Decent points. Price and all. Oh, really? yeah. yeah. A couple of wee points I want to get uh, your thoughts on guys before we go. Um obviously clubs are going to try and sign players. I think Stephen Hamill's right up there and trying to get a couple of players. Get the boy that scored the raker against us for Sligo Rovers. Yeah. Free tick for about forty old. yards. Yeah. I Sean Blaney, I think it is. Yeah. Uh so I um he, he he was he looked apart actually against us at still a Vietnam flashbacks every time I say Sligo <laughs> Rovers, yeah. but uh, I was a raker at a free kick. You put, oh, to put it for that distance past Liam really Kelly, uh, who's been brilliant, you know? Yeah, well, I think he's still looking for a couple more. Um, surprisingly, in some of the back pages uh, this, mm. this morning, Hugh, uh, Giacomakis can't agree uh, terms on a new deal, club not budging, player not budging on what he thinks he's worth. 
He got 17 goals last season. He's already banged in eight uh, this season. He could be one of those players that uh, Ange Postacoglu was talking about is going to be moved on with the likes of Juranovic. Yep. Uh, I think the Juranovic thing would be easier for everybody to take because it looks as if they've got, I mean, they've got Ralston there already. Who's, Johnson. Who's, uh, but Johnson, Alistair Johnson come from Canada and I watched him when he was playing against Belgium. Uh, and I'm... Uh, and he's, dec he's, he's decent, he's very quick. I said in the show the other day that he gets up and down the park well and uh, 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 I don't know, a viewer said, well, that should be the minimum requirement. <laughs> <laughs> and he's quite, uh, quite right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's... Well, the manager said, we, we try to play football. Uh, he's uh, 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 so uh, I want to see something go at snooker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I haven't had a chance to talk to you about it. Michael Beale's in at Rangers. His first game that he's... I think they've cancelled the friendly against Swansea, but his first right. game will be Leverkusen um, on uh, the 10th of December now. So that could bring a huge crowd out there to, to welcome the 18th mm. Rangers manager. Um, he's got a big job in his hands. What's your view on it, Tom? Uh, just that again, he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders because he's been billed uh, for the outset by the Rangers fans mm -hmm. as the brains mm -hmm. behind the partnership with him and uh, Stephen Gerrard. Uh, it also just feels like yesterday mm -hmm. he was at the club, so it's the majority of the same players that he was working with. So I, 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 I think then the Rangers fans are uh, assuming and indeed maybe demanding that he gets off to an absolute flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, because if Rangers had any chance, uh, I know your dear old chum Barry Ferguson, he was out saying that, you know, uh, when Rangers come back, they beat them, them, them and them, and then they're going to play Celtic and they beat and then suddenly the league's back on. Yeah. But of course, this was Barry, whose last famous headline was that um, Gio has got Ange sussed. <laughs> that was a word that will almost nearly follow Barry around now, you know. Yeah. So uh, maybe he's not the, you know, the, the soothsayer that we thought he was, but... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, I've, I've actually for two years gone out of my way not to mention him or cane him for even one column and you've gone with it. You've Gone with his stunts in right away. Oh, no, I, love, I, love, I love Barry to bits. I think he's yeah. great, uh, absolutely. But again, it's it's you know what the, you know certainly for Barry and he, he you know he, he he does a column um, in the Daily Record and it's clearly aimed at the Rangers fans. He's he's probably not going to come out and and put the spin on it. He thinks oh, no, Rangers are gub. That's it. Nothing nothing yeah. to play for. Mm. Maybe the Scottish Cup. So yeah, we know that. But I haven't I haven't heard one. Have you? I haven't, heard, I haven't heard one Rangers pundit suggest that. The, the, the uh, Rangers have nothing to play for now. The, 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 I think the I think on the Beale thing. Richard, does Richard Foster count as a Rangers pundit? Yeah, Richard's a good ah, lad. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, he, well, he did. He did yeah. the, the other night on the BBC, he said that no, he thinks the league's gone. Yes. And he thinks for Beale it was. Uh, uh, Cup and stuff like that, mm. um, but yeah, but but hey, you know the guys, the, you know the, the the guys put himself in the frame. It was he was clearly desperate to come to Rangers. You only need to ask some Queens Park Rangers fans <laughs> what you think about that and the L word loyalty, you know. And it's bonkers that anyhow, Hugh. As you know, the, the only loyal people in football are the fans. Mm. The players come, players go. Managers come, managers. Yeah, Brendan yeah. Rodgers playing the Celtic fans like a fiddle and all the, you know, the emotional we, stuff. We and love that. that though. I mean, it, what it's Aye. called is the banter years, isn't it? Aye. It's that point of somebody makes a <coughs> stupid <coughs> statement Aye. and you get caned. We've all had it. You get caned. God, Aye. you only have to look every year when um, there's a certain day comes around and most of the Hibs fans just retweet my tweet about, <laughs> about game over 2-0 to, to Hearts. Aye. The wait goes on for the Scottish Cup for Hibs. Mm. Bang, two each, replay, and then on to win the Cup. Aye. Yeah. That's what happens. Well, that's why we love it. That's great. If everybody was right all the time, it would be a pretty boring, exactly. boring exactly. sport. And the great yeah. thing is for people to be totally wrong is, is to say to yourself, I mean, for example, you say when Argentina plays Saudi Arabia, well, Argentina yeah. going to, you know, stroll us and say that. Aye. The only reason we would watch it is we don't know what's going to happen, yeah. otherwise we wouldn't so watch it. Maybe Barry's turned into Hugh, because it reminded uh, me of Hugh. Uh, Keevans was the master of that. Keevans used to say, here's the doomsday scenario, they could lose this, this, Aye. this and this, and that's it, the league's over. Uh, this manager's one. under pressure, uh, and then they go on to win the league. <laughs> they go on to win the league. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it, and I held it live, he did it recently, with the, 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 there was a Celtic game, uh, and they were sitting in the studio, <laughs> and Hugh was lambasting them, you know, it was when, 
<laughs> uh, who was it got the late equaliser that seemed as if that was going to be the end up and uh, uh -huh. Hume as well this Celtic team they're, they're not as strong as they were they're not scoring goal oh and there's another goal up at the other end and, like and then he goes back and he says why well, I originally uh. did uh, forecast this result come on Hume no, that's all part of the game of yeah absolutely. that's why we love him um, uh. to be fair listen uh, you get opinions uh, certainly we're on five days a week of the football show but there's so much more on offering PLZ soccer you get breaking football news on the app you'll also get the chance to cover English European and world football it's all there for you you can watch the football show live on and it hey I'm not blowing smoke up your backside but if they've not seen it if they've not seen it your interview with Frank McGarvey wow yeah. That was brilliant, that was really good. Yep. Yeah. Good old Frank. And, and, and to be fair, I'm glad you mentioned that because the amount of people um, from all uh, quarters, uh, everybody who supports every team, um, have all uh, passed on their best wishes. So many people actually watched it, stopped me mm. in the street, um, and mentioned at various things uh, that they've watched it. And it was emotional but they've passed on their best wishes to Frank because he has mm. a major battle and that puts football in perspective as oh, well oh, yeah. absolutely um, I, I like the fact that we actually are covering a sport um, that is one of many where there's no such a thing as sporting integrity right. is that yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. Goes uh, as Kevin used to say to me on many a morning at Radio Clyde Hypocrisy, it's a noble art. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think I, I think I'm safe to say we can leave it there. It's good having a wee natter with you, Tam and, and Hugh. Always good. I hope you enjoyed the chat. Um, as ever, when there's no domestic football, we like to talk about the gossip, possibly players coming and going, the joys of the World Cup, the joys of fantastic players who can just light up your life. Let's hope we're talking more about that tomorrow on the programme uh, when we reflect on today's World Cup matches. And, and let's answer. hope this traffic isn't hellish as it always is it the back of five uh, I know yes the minute I hit that M8 it's uh, murder yeah absolutely it's an absolute nightmare thanks for that Sam you're an absolute joy with these things although uh, to be fair there's not many people um, would stand in your way um, with regards to the car you're driving in the area you'll be able to <laughs> you'll be able to we've not finished yet no, leave the poem to later no <laughs> it can't <laughs> wait don't no, like, no. let me tell you why I'm doing this because I've turned the computer off too early and the answer to the quiz oh I yes know, excellent I need to give you the answer to the quiz because well, Pelly, goals, who, yeah. how many did you go for oh I went for 904 I think you went for I went 989 nine. 904 for you and 989 nine. okay because I turned the computer off too early so I might as well tell you the answer uh, to the quiz which is how many goals officially has Pele scored in his career and I think Hugh's right on the basis that um, unofficially the Brazilian FA and Pele on his own website is something like 1,231 oh. um, but the actual answer officially recognised by FIFA in his career goals uh, is in 831 games 757 ah. so there you are 757 oh, goals yeah. uh, if you got that fair play to you uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel there's lots of great one-to-ones and some great content coming your way over the next couple of weeks and competitions will continue from Tam Hugh and myself Peter Martin thanks for watching <laughs>